Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Shake Sales. I'm Sujan Patel, the founder and CEO of Mailshake. Today I've got Damon Lemby here. He's a world class, um, really world class person, but a best selling author and a thought leader. And really, you got to check out the Learn It Pod, uh, Learn It All podcast. Um, Damon, welcome. Susan, thanks for that introduction. Uh, world class. I, I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, my name is Damon Lemby. I'm the CEO of Learn It. Uh, we're a corporate global training company. A uh, quick background on me is I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area. As a kid growing up, it was all about sports. I played baseball, basketball, and football. Around high school, I realized that if I was going to continue on past high school, it was for baseball. Put all my effort there. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be a high school All-American in baseball. I uh, was drafted by the Atlanta Braves in the 13th round, dating myself back in 1990. Chose to go to college instead. I had a good career. Thought I had an opportunity at Arizona State to continue after. Um, but sometimes things just don't work out. My baseball career ended. I was 22 years old. And I was kind of in a position like, well, what do I do now? You know, I, my identity was a baseball player and I wasn't sure if any of my skills were transferable and which a lot, what happens to a lot of athletes. And I was fortunate. I came from a family, uh, a large real estate family in the Bay Area. And uh, my dad was a strong entrepreneur and had this idea for a computer training company called Learn It. I started there as a receptionist, worked my way up taught classes, did sales, and about six years into it, I was uh, there looking for a new CEO. I became the CEO, and I've been running Learn It uh, as my main focus uh, ever since. And like a lot of CEOs, um, you know, we I, I, I go back and forth between managing the sales team. I've always been uh, a sales-driven, sales-focused leader, studied it. I got my favorite thought leaders, if anybody's interested. And um, over the years, I've not only, I go back and forth between running the sales team and maybe outsourcing it or, or having a manager. And uh, I really enjoy it. And I formally and informally, I would say coach or mentor probably a couple dozen individuals from enterprise SVPs to uh, somebody just getting into the sales world. So uh, it's something I'm really passionate about, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Love it. So I'm, I'm guessing you've seen it all, or at least close to all the the mess of you know being a manager in any industry and 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 what that looks like. So today I want to dive into three main areas. One is when you know importance of sales reps failing, mm -hmm. toxic high performers. And hiring for experience, uh, hiring for potential versus experience. Mm -hmm. All great topics. We can dig in a lot on this, but I want to just make sure everyone here listening, uh, watching, uh, walks away with a bunch of tips. So let's just jump in. So failure. Why, why do, why do you want your reps to fail? What, what's the, what's the, what's kind of the details around that? What I mean by that is, and this is important, especially for people who are recently promoted into a, a sales management role. So you get in, you go from being an in individual contributor, you're now a sales leader, you're managing a team, sometimes for the very first time. And your initial reaction is to jump in and do the work for them. Uh, <clears throat> to give you an example, I remember 20 years ago, uh, I was at a call with a brand new rep and uh, in-person call and she's, she's running the meeting and I, I just, I, I made the mistake. I jumped in and I took over the meeting and I, I we ended up winning the deal. But what, I, what it taught me afterwards is that if you, if you jump in and you, you don't allow your reps to fail, uh, you'll never learn from that. And the only way they're going to be able to learn and grow is to be given the opportunity to, to, to try things out and, 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 and to fail. And, you know, I'm not saying I want you guys in to lose deals, but it's a great opportunity for them to get out there, experience it and maybe recap afterwards. Like, what can we do differently? What can we do next time? I just see a lot of managers that jump in and take over the meetings. And what tends to happen is that when you do that, the, the reps are going to expect that moving forward and they're, they're never going to evolve into the role. And it's really not a scalable way to run your sales team. Absolutely. I mean, all you're doing is training your reps to not think for themselves. 
hundred percent. Multiply, multiply that by sixty days, and now you've got lemmings. I mean, maybe I'm being overly harsh. Ninety days a year, like that's a really bad direction to go as as a for your reps. Um, let's talk about. Let's move on to talk about high performers, right? Everybody, like we all have some high performers, you know, the mid pack and then the duds. And I, I'm pretty hard with these, these words, but you know, really it is what it is. If you're in sales and you're not performing, you know, you know where you sit probably below the line, but, but those high performers, sometimes they're really bad for the overall org. Um, well, first of all, let's talk about like, how do you identify a toxic high performer? What is that? What do you look well, even, for? Even a step before that, you know, when you mentioned the duds, I think one of the, challenges a lot of managers have is that when your gut feeling is somebody's not going to make it, you got to, you got, you got to cut the cord early on. You know, I mean, I, I think people should reflect back and think about like, why give somebody the runway of three more months? You know, if they're not performing and they're not making the calls and they're not, you know, they don't have the aptitude to pick up the role, you got to cut, you got to cut, you got to cut the cord early. Going back to your question about what is what do I consider to be a, a toxic high performer? You know, for me at Learn It and some of the people I, I, I work with is I think it's really important to, to hire based on what your company values are. You know, and if your company values are things like collaboration and accountability, then that's important. And if you have, and I see this all the time, uh, individuals who may do may, may be top performers, but they're terrible to the customer success team. They cut corners. They, you know, they, they bully uh, and, and take over sales meetings. Then you, you may have great short-term gains, but long-term, it's gonna it's gonna kill the culture. Um, I got a great example. I have uh, somebody I work with who had a rep who went in and basically cheated on a, on a contest. They, they had an opportunity in there that they know was closed, lost. And, but they asked the customer experience rep to, uh, to not close it out in Salesforce until after, uh, this individual was paid out. And so the customer experience rep contacted the sales manager that I work with and said, Hey, what do you want me to do here? This, I'm uncomfortable with this. The sales manager said, I agree, brought it up to the, uh, SVP. This is a, pretty large company and uh and and said what happened and they said unfortunately that's not right maybe have a conversation with them but uh we're gonna we're gonna allow it and and keep this person on board and uh this wasn't a small thing it was about a ten thousand dollar bonus they received for it uh, and i just think that that's you know if it's something like that they should just be terminated if it's a if it's if it's something less than that and it's just toxic behavior, then maybe address it, find out why it's happening. Uh, but if it continues to linger on, you're going to lose other great talent. And overall, it's just going to, it's going to hurt the overall team dynamics. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, you don't build a scalable business with heroes, right? And if any one person in your company, including, you probably tell this to management all the time, or if you're the one that's the hero, you're doing the wrong thing for your career, business, you know, routine. Um, so yeah, make, makes complete sense. And I want to, one more question or area I want to dig into is around, um, hiring and hiring for potential versus experience what you want. This to me, I, I get the concept, but I'm like, Oh my God, what, what do I have to do to get them to be, get them to experience? Like what, why, why hire for potential versus experience? Why hire for potential over experience? Now, this isn't every role, right? If you're in a, a, a complex uh, environment and it really takes a senior person, I'm not referring to that. I, I'm referring to roles where, uh, whether it's an SDR or, I mean, that may, they probably don't have a lot of experience, but just a lot of organizations, uh, they don't need a senior person in sales. Why I think Learn It has made our, we've been successful because over the years, Learn it has been a launching pad for sharp individuals early on in their career coming in and, and maybe it's a year, maybe it's five years with no sales experience. They come in to John, we give them the tools they need to be successful. We train them and we mold them into 
you know, the sales process and the mindset that we want them to be in. And they don't come with preconceived notions. And you're able, I mean, it takes a lot of, like we spoke about earlier, you have to have patience. You can't jump in and be the hero. But if you train and coach them up, I think it makes a tremendous difference compared to the, trust me, I've had plenty of these uh, individuals who've got 10 years experience. They come in, they have it all figured out. I like to call them know-it-alls and um, you just can't really work with them. And so when at all possible, I highly recommend uh, hiring for potential. Are you familiar with the, it's not necessarily sales, but the, the great Herb Keller story at Southwest? Would love to hear it. It's called the 10 minute turnaround. It's one of my favorite stories. And Herb is the CEO of, um, or was a CEO founder of Southwest Airlines. And he, you know, they're on the verge of bankruptcy. And he said to himself, the only way we could survive is to cut out all the frills and drop our pricing, which by the way, sales reps, that's not the, the road I always recommend taking, dropping your pricing. But anyways, getting back to the story, so he said, the only way to do that is to, is to do more flights in a day. So we need to get the turnaround time. You know, when a flight lands, they, they gas it up, clean it up down from industry standard, which I think was about 14, 15 minutes to 10 minutes. So he went to his board and he brought up this proposition. He said, we're going to do X amount of flights per day. One of the board members raised a hand and said, that's impossible. We'd have to get the turnaround time down to about 12, 13 minutes down from like 15 or 16. The only way I could do that is we have to hire the most experienced and best uh, people out there, whether it's from Delta or Eastern Airlines or whatever it was back then. And Herb's like, I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to hire a bunch of sharp kids who don't know any better. And I'm going to tell them you have to get it done in 12 minutes. And you know what they did? They got it done in 10 minutes. They didn't know any different. And same thing comes with sales. If you tell somebody you need to make 100 phone calls a day and book 10 meetings, if they have nothing to gauge it against, who knows? Give them the opportunity to go out and learn and do it. So that's kind of, I've used that story and that type of mindset, I mean, for 25 years. I love it. I love it. This is th this is so important. Uh, when you, I, I find the people in the role of these experiences in the role at the current time to that prevent them from taking leaps like 10 X leaps forward. Absolutely. And, you know, um, if you're, you know, I love what you said. One thing I've learned, I want to just add to this is if you want, if you, you know, okay, hiring for experience or potential sounds great if you want to make a leap forward, but you can also train your retrain your team. If you want to drastically change something, we at Mailshake, we've made, so many pricing changes in the last two years. I mean, we went from like $50 a month to $1,000 a year to $29. We went like every which way. And so we, 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 we've kept the same reps actually. And one of the things I do is every time I make a change, I go tell them to take five days off. Really? Just like come back. You are, you are fired. You have a congratulations. You're rehired at this company. Let me tell you about Mailshake. 17.0, right? And five days might be, they might need more. They might need less. I'm like, but I want you not to like just have a shitty five days, mm -hmm. just like hang out. I want you to go like to Disneyland, right? Like I want you to go like, how about like a vacation? Cause the, the same reps that come back, they're just different people. Um, most of the time. And, uh, I, I could tell you just from that one limited experience that that seems to be working well. Let me, let me ask you a question. Uh, say, say when you go through and you make these changes, which I think is great, uh, do you, are, are they involved at all or do they contribute at all before the changes are made as far as what they're like, if you go from a $50 a month to a thousand dollars a year or any of those ideas run by them first, not, not that they have any authority and decision-making, but just yeah. like, Hey, what do you think about that? What do you think about this or think about that? No, no. Um, uh, I probably should or could, but. Now, and, and part of that is I ask them for a lot of input and I tell them like, Hey, we're working on something crazy right now. Uh, it might, you might get nothing, nothing might change next week, but I just, I'm asking all these questions. I involve them into the questions. And I get their input on like, so in changing pricing, 
are you not closing deals because of the like dollar value? How many of those deals mention that? Is there, we use like Avoma for our call tracking and like sales coaching stuff. We say, okay, well, like, can you just type that keyword in? What's the, what did that, what does the tool say? Right? Like, give me the actual stats. So they know something's coming, but they don't know what. And I tell them this is all input for something different. So they're involved in that. And then they're, they're usually not excited about the change, to be honest. Uh, they're fearful. Yeah. No change is never received as like, good, but it, the job is then to make them excited, right? To get them to be refreshed about it. But I, but I think, you know, even if they don't have the input into the actual decision, I think what you're just talking about makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're getting their input, you know, you're getting their input and you're, and you're, I think it's great that you're looking at what's going on and you're not just you're stuck in your ways and you realize that you have to evolve and change and adapt because if you don't these days, you're done. You're, you're done. Yeah. You're going to get, you're going to get, you know, leapfrogged. Absolutely. That's really, you know, I think that's the, especially like with all of the COVID high, low, wherever we're at in the economy, um, things are changing. And so, you know, you, I, I think you got to build a team that can be nimble and move around, especially at a startup. And the people who I've seen not be successful are those. Uh, let me go touch back on one last thing before we end. Um, you mentioned this for like hiring for potential and sales. I, you know, my background's in marketing and I've been like a CMO, VP of, VP of marketing. I've had the same exact parallels in marketing. The best marketers I've hired are the ones I've hired for potential. They've got some hustle. They've got some like maybe a little bit of experience or like they're not like completely green, but the interns and the marketing assistant that I've hired have come on and I'm talking for 20 years. The folks I've, I've hired maybe 50 marketing people. The folks that get fired first are actually the most experienced because they've got a pre preconceived notion on how it should be done. Yeah. That's yeah. What I'm and and I, I, yeah, I think for, I think for your listeners, I think it's important out there, especially if you're making a career change or you're just getting started. If you get an opportunity to take an internship, you know, and, and, and be able to get roll up your sleeves and, and learn. And, and get your foot in the door. I mean, that, that's just, that's, that's the way, way to go about it. And I think you're, and, and it's, and it's not just sales. I talk about this all the time. It's, it's marketing. It's accounting. If you get these people who are stuck, I call them, you know, my book's called the learn it all leader, the, the know it alls, ones who have it all figured out. They're not the ones who, who are going to get you to the next level. You need people who are continually open minded, have learning agility, uh, with all the craziness going on today, whether it's, of course, AI or whatever is going on, you, you need that flexible thinking. All right. So uh, I, I think we've got, we've covered a lot. I'm pretty sure everyone listening here is like, going to go take action on some of these things. And maybe hopefully we've convinced some folks to hire for that potential. Where can people, uh, where can people go to kind of learn more, keep in touch and, you know, connect with you? Sure. The easiest is probably my LinkedIn page, uh, Damon Lemby on LinkedIn. Uh, if you, anybody out there is listening and interested in a free class, um, learnit.com. Learnit.com is our company website. Uh, shoot me a message on LinkedIn and I'll, you know, you get a f- class of like 250 bucks. I'll give you a free class. And um, my book is uh, on Amazon, uh, learnitalleader.com. Love it. Thanks, man. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you.